just historically our understanding of human and animal virus replication lagged behind our understanding of bacteria virus replication. The reason is because viruses are obligate intracellular parasites. To study them in humans or animals, we would have to infect the humans or animals with the viruses, which consequently could cause a lot of damage. So there's you know, really important moral and ethical issues about carrying out virus studies in humans or animals. Um, we'll find out later we developed some techniques where now we can study replication of at least some human and animal viruses without actually infecting humans or animals. Um, but again, historically, um, people really didn't worry about if you were infecting bacteria and killing the bacteria. So our first understanding of how viruses replicate was through the study of bacterial viruses um, called bacteriophage. So if I just say phage, folks, right off the bat, you think, oh, it's a bacterial virus. So folks, this is the an example of one of the T even bacteriophage, and it's just so beautiful. Hollywood should be going crazy. Want to do a, a movie about the um, T bacteriophage. So again, folks, um, just with regard to structure, um, back to this T um, T four will say bacteriophage. It's a complex. It's a complex virus because it has not only a protein capsid which we call the head, and you might recognize this, you guys, as an icosahedral um, capsid. And in it, in, within the capsid, is the phage DNA. So this is a DNA uh, virus. But then in addition to this head, the capsid, notice this amazing tail here. This tail is just amazing. So this central cylinder of the tail, this is the equivalent of a hypodermic syringe and needle. And we're going to see that the virus is going to use this cylinder to literally inject the bacterium with the phage DNA. So it's pretty amazing. And then what makes the, um, the, the T even phages even more kind of impressive is if they have the, these long tail fibers. And at the tips of the tail fibers will be the special viral adhesins that will bind to very specific um, molecules on the surface of the bacterium. So the, the, T, um, the T4 phages, um, one host is E. coli. So we're going to see that the, this is going to be a virus that's going to invade good old E. coli. All right, so. And again, this is electron um, micrograph of the virus. We wouldn't be able to see these little guys with our light, our light microscopes. Um, so we're going to go through phage replication, and again, folks, this gets a little bit complicated. We're going to see there's two different types of um, bacterial virus phage replication, and the first one we're going to describe is called the lytic replication cycle. So replication means um, the viruses, the phage, are going to make copies of themselves within the host bacterium, in this case E. coli. Lytic tells us as a result of the um, phage, the virus replicating inside the bacterium, the bacterium in the end is going to lyse, and that means it's going to die. So if you're the bacterial host, lytic replication is bad news because it means you're going to end up dying. And it was those early observations of bacteria that it had infected, excuse me, I said that wrong. It was in those early observations of bacteriophage invading bacteria and undergoing the lytic replication, causing those plaques in the lawns of uh, bacteria that first made the impression on the early observers that something was eating the bacteria. And again, that's where the name bacteriophage, bacteria eater, comes from. So folks, um, we'll use the T4 phage that we just um, looked at. And we're going to describe the T4 phage as a lytic phage, meaning it can only, only um, um, replicate using the lytic replication cycle. Okay. And there's um, steps in this process. And again, you guys, I apologize because sometimes different books are different. Um, diagrams they might have different numbers but we'll try to try to kind of keep this basic sequence of events so the first step is always folks that the bacteria phage the bacterial virus has to attach to the surface of the bacterial host and remember the fancy name for a virus attaching to the host cell it's called adsorption and the viral adhesins have to bind to complementary host cell surface receptors now you know some people say well why would um, host cells have those receptors for the virus, and and the host the host cell surface receptors they play some um, function for the cell. They're not they're not there just for the viruses to attach to them. It's just that the viruses 
have evolved um, adhesins that can bind to the um, some specific molecules on the surface of a, of a cell. And then folks entry um, with the bacteriophage entry is when they inject their phage, in this case DNA, into, into the bacterium, which is just phenomenal, using that hypodermic syringe-like um, tail cylinder. And then folks, for the bacterium, once the DNA gets inside, this is bad news. And it's, it's really kind of sad because the bacterial um, RNA polymerase will transcribe the phage DNA into phage mRNA, and then the bacterial ribosomes will translate the phage mRNA into proteins. And it's at that point that that poor little bacterium is truly a goner. So the, the bacterial chromosome will be um, degraded, it will be hydrolyzed to release the uh, nucleotides. It will be used to make multiple copies of the phage DNA. And then um, again we said that the phage ribosomes are madly producing phage proteins. And so as uh, Dr. Meyer would describe, the poor little bacterium is no longer a ba bacterium. Really, it's just a phage producing factory, a phage producing factory. So we'll see um, um, in this stage, the synthesis stage, the phage DNA is being um, replicated and the phage proteins are being made. And then, um, oh, sorry folks, there's a cat at the window. Um, and then in this next, this next, um, process this next step called assembly. This is just wild, you guys. The phage um, uh, proteins will assemble, self-assemble into a head. They'll package um, pieces of DNA that are in the cytoplasm. They package those pieces of DNA, and most of the pieces of DNA will be phage DNA. But occasionally, there's a mistake, and occasionally, one of those phage heads, one of those phage capsids, will accidentally package a piece little piece of the bacterial chromosome and we'll, we're going to see that's going to become important when we, we come back and talk about transduction. Once the, um, the phage capsids, the heads are assembled and packaged with DNA, then the proteins that make up the tail, the cylinder and those tail um, fibers, they assemble and then they attach the phage head. This is just like such science fiction, it's crazy. And then once the phage is assembled inside the bacterium, they're going to release a lysozyme-like substance that's going to help break down the peptoglycan. The poor little bacterium is going to lyse and die, and then we'll have release of all of these new, newly replicated phage. And then those phage are going to go on and um, attach to infect neighboring bacteria. And again, you guys, that's how those plaques were formed in the lawn of bacteria. So I think we next have a diagram showing this process. So just going through this lytic replication, you guys, so this would be our little T4 phage. Here's our E. coli, and here is the E. coli chromosome, circular chromosome in purple. Here's our phage, right? So it's going to attach. It's going to inject the phage DNA into the bacterium. So that's entry, right? And then the phage DNA will be transcribed into phage mRNA, and then the bacteria ribosomes will translate the phage mRNA into phage proteins. And we can see here, you guys, during this, um, during, during this process, phage proteins are going to chew up, digest the bacterium, so the bacterial um, nucleotides can be used to make copies of phage DNA here. And in reality, you guys, this is just this is you don't need to worry about. It. Usually, the phage DNA it it forms a circle, but don't even worry about that now. And here, folks, we see the the synthesis stage where the, um, the bacterial um, DNA polymerase has copied the phage DNA, so we have multiple copies of phage DNA here. Um, the bacterial RNA polymerase has transcribed the phage DNA into mRNA, and then the bacterial ribosomes have translated the phage mRNA into phage proteins. So here we see, um, this is actually part of assembly, we see that the phage proteins are starting to assemble into those capsids, those heads. They're starting to assemble into the components of the tail. So here's the cylinder of the tail. Here are the tail fibers. And again, folks, it's so wild. The phage heads are going to package themselves with pieces of DNA. And most of the DNA, again, will be phage DNA. But occasionally, by mistake, a little piece of bacterial DNA will sneak into one of these heads. Here we see the tail end of assembly, folks, where the tails will assemble attached to the, um, to the phage heads carrying the DNA. They release a lysozyme-like substance, 
and here we have lysis of the bacterial host and that's killing the bacterial host with release of all the with all the newly replicated phage. Um, one thing you guys and it's just kind of uh, not all that important notice that the protein parts of the infecting phage don't go inside the bacterium only the DNA got inside the bacterium that's the trouble right with phage DNA viral DNA once it gets inside then often it's bad news for us. And here, folks, just some details, again, just showing you how remarkable this is. So just to get you oriented, this would be our E. coli. This would be the E. coli um, cell wall right here, thin layer of peptoglycan, outer membrane. And here's the cytoplasmic membrane of the E. coli, and this would be the inside of the E. coli, the cytoplasm. So here we have the attachment, the absorption, the tail fibers, the adhesins binding to specific surface receptors. Um, the phage um, lowers its cylinder and there's these little pins right here in this base plate right that are that are anchoring the phage um, onto the surface of the of the uh, bacterial cell wall here's the phage dna and this next event you guys is absolutely crazy so then the tail contracts and it drives this internal um, needle hollow protein needle um, across the bacterial cell wall and cell membrane and as the tail contracts it's going to drive inject the phage DNA into the bacterium that is just so crazy to me right oh and here's here's a little a little detail we didn't mention before you guys the phage releases a little bit of phage lysozyme like enzyme to help break down that peptoglycan and that's going to make it easier to punch through the peptoglycan uh, during the injection of the DNA crazy this is just showing assembly, folks. So um, as we said, the, the, the capsomeres, the proteins that make up the capsid, assemble in the capsid. The proteins that make up the tail um, cylinder, assemble. The proteins that make up the tail fibers, assemble. Um, the capsids just spontaneously will package the pieces of DNA right here. right, And then the tail will assemble onto the capsid here and there. Right, and this is all this is all done spontaneously. It's the craziest thing, folks. Absolutely wild. Okay, folks. So I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna stop this video here, because this next cycle is um, the lysogenic replication cycle. Um, it's it's a little bit complicated. We're gonna see a special group of bacteriophage known as temperate bacteriophage can carry out either the lysogenic replication cycle. Oops, oops, or the um, uh, lytic replication. A specific example of a temperate phage is going to be lambda phage of E. coli. Um, and we're going to see, the reason I think I'll do a separate video is lambda phage, it can enter the lysogenic cycle and then with specific triggers it can it can switch back into the lytic cycle. Right, so um, this is referred to as induction. So let's stop this lytic replication video here and we'll do another one on the lysogenic cycle.